water for Canberra is something that we've really got to consider as, as a lifeblood. It's something that we, we collected obviously up in the mountain catchments. We've got some of, some of the cleanest catchments in the country, which is great. Um, and it's really taken for granted because it's something that we, we use every day um, and it comes right through from we collect it, we distribute it, we drink it, we use it for everything every day. And then at the end of the cycle, it end up, ends up down here, down at Lower Malonglo. As Canberra grew, so too did the need to provide safe and environmentally friendly wastewater treatment. During the 1970s, a new plant was designed and built on a site just outside the city on the Malonglo River. The Lower Malonglo Water Quality Control Centre was completed in 1978 and treats all of Canberra's wastewater. Lower Malonglo treats about 85 megalitres of water a day. Um, all of Canberra's domestic water comes through here. Um, the process involves a combination of chemical, um, biological and, and physical treatment. The way, the way we think about it is you think you've got something that's mostly water and where it's coming from, so you think it comes out of your toilets and your showers and your kitchen sinks and your washing machines. And mostly, most of that stuff is water. It's just clean water that's going down the sewers. So what we need to do is look at the 1% the of stuff that's not water and decide to ourselves, how do we make that clean so it doesn't harm anybody? Um, basically the way that we do that is we take our sewage and we, we distribute it down here to Lower Malongo through our series of sewage systems. Um, it comes in through two enormous pipes which is run underground in Canberra and then what we do is we take out the worst of the stuff by taking out our solids um, through a, a, a screening system so we've got a whole lot of coarse screens that take out all of the really big stuff like our, you know, our sand and our toilet paper and we, we chew all of that stuff up and get it out. And then we go through the treatment process and we say what, what kind of things are going to cause harm and we make sure that we remove those from, our, from this, the water stream basically. So we make sure we get rid of all of our sludge and all of our nutrients um, and we do that by dosing chemicals um, and then settling out our solids and then we basically filter down the other end and we keep all of the good bacteria that does the job and then we get rid of all of the bad bacteria. Um, when we're finished, basically what we've got is clean water and that's really what we're aiming for in the end. The, the bugs in the process, they're good bugs, there's good and bad bugs. The bugs we use in the process are good bugs. Uh, we use them for, for the removal of ammonia. Uh, we convert the ammonia into nitrates and nitrites and um, in, a, in nitrification process. And from there we have also a denitrification process which converts the nitrates into nitrogen gas. Um, there's different species of bugs that do this and by us balancing the oxygen levels and then how we recycle the bugs through the system we we're able to balance, balance that process, keep them happy because the, the bugs are the key to the process here at Lower Monroe. Being at the top of the Murray-Darling system, it's important that we provide a good quality effluent which can be reused by downstream users for both drinking water, uh, irrigation, irrigation of crops but for food and also to uh, put, provide the environmental flow just to keep the river systems alive, especially during dry periods of time. The quality of the water leaving Lower Mlunglo is, is higher quality than what's in the river. It's comparable to most of the treatment plants in, in Australia and better than, than most. Um, the water is near drinking water quality. It would need some more process to make the drinking water, but it's very close to drinking water quality. One of the things that we, we think of fairly closely here in terms of our environmental impact is that we need to make sure that we keep things like our fish um, and our aquatic species and all of the things that live downstream need to be happy and in a healthy environment. Um, so a good example is that Lower Malongo has got a pretty healthy platypus colony that lives just downstream. And for us that's really important because we need to make sure that we don't have impact on those kind of species.